back, everybody, to another edition of Hoops with Noops. Of course, I am Noops. Alex Christensen is the full name, but again, Noops is more fun. Thanks, as always, to the folks at FTN. They make this show possible. Be sure that you're subscribed to this channel to get all the great content on the FTN network. I, of course, produce Hoops with Noops in video form Mondays and Fridays and written forms Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And if you want all my NBA picks, make sure you sign up for an FTN package. That gets you into the FTN Bets Discord, which I mention all the time. That's where all my bets go. These bets that I'm going to talk about today get in there super early. All my prop bets are in there. So, again, make sure you're signed up and in there. A really great community, a lot of conversation, a lot of good bets from other people. And, again, tons of great stuff at FTN. You can see a little discount code down there at the bottom. Be sure to sign up. And let's get to some NBA basketball. It is Monday, of course. We're in the middle of February, and I've mentioned this a couple times. It will continue to mention it because it's so important. We are getting very close to the trade deadline. That is February 8th, just a couple days, this Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Everything has to be final, so be careful. We don't know who's going to be on some of these teams. If you're hearing rumors, you got to be vigilant. At the same time, we're also getting to the All-Star break. That's a tough spot for teams they start to rest players everyone is kind of looking forward to that break Uh, these games can get really messy so even more so than normal than we have to be in the nba regular season you got to be vigilant about player news make sure you're checking the injury report make sure you're paying attention to Woj, to sham seeing who's tweeting about what any rumors there are because things can change at the drop of a hat and you don't want to get stuck with a bad ticket because you bet on a team and now all of a sudden they don't have all the players you were planning on them having and then again there's always those rest concerns this is when we start to see players um, get rested a lot a lot of things pop up late so be careful but six games tonight one game i do like and have a bet in and of course i'll talk about all the rest and not for noobs just try to give you a little bit of the lay of the land why i'm not betting the games or why i might bet them later let's start of course with the los angeles clippers visiting the atlanta hawks Just an absolute great matchup here for Atlanta. A great spot to fade the Clippers. You've got a veteran team in Los Angeles that played last night in a tough game. We saw um, Kawhi Leonard play 35 minutes, 42 minutes for James Harden. It's really tough for a veteran team that does have some young players. So when you look at your average age, you know, it's in the low 20, it's in the mid 20s with a lot of other teams. But if you look at their top eight, it's an average age of 31 years old. That is pretty high for a team, one of the oldest teams in the NBA. When again, you look at their best players and really what that means is it just compounds the effect of all this travel fatigue, all these minutes played fatigue. And tonight again is the seventh game of their road trip their second game in two nights played um, last night in Miami in a very physical game we haven't seen their injury report we're not sure if they're arresting anybody and they go up against a team in Atlanta tonight that is just a nightmare matchup to face on the second night of a back-to-back you saw this phenomenon the Pacers were able to cover against the Boston Celtics second night of a back-to-back Atlanta pushes pace they play fast basketball They try to run. They get as many possessions in as possible. It just makes it harder and harder. It really tires teams out. So uh, I like this spot for the Hawks. And I've made fun of the Hawks a lot in this space, as you, I'm sure, have heard from me. As of a week ago, the Atlanta Hawks were the worst team in the NBA against the spread at home, against the spread on the road, against the spread as an underdog, and against the spread as a favorite. But they have won their last four games outright, covered in three of them, and they are no longer the worst team in the NBA against the spread as an underdog, that illustrious honor goes to the Charlotte Hornets. And what that means is uh, the Hawks are just getting better. Things are starting to stabilize. Their injury reports are a lot cleaner now. Clint Capella is out tonight, but I actually kind of like the version of their team with more of a small ball approach and going against a Clippers team with no you know, real center. Zubac is a nice player, but he is not your classic post guy. You can guard him with a smaller player. It's probably even better in the pick and rolls they run with him. So I think they can survive without Capella tonight. I like the way the Hawks are playing basketball, and I actually have them as short favorites here. This is their fifth. This will be their fifth game in a row at home. I've mentioned before, teams, when they play at home, their efficiency gets better over that time period. Their shooting tends to get better over that time period. They're more comfortable with their surroundings. Those sight lines that you have in different arenas become more familiar. And it's just everything gets a little easier as the ball is going through over and over and over again. So, again, everything looks to me like this is a great spot to back Atlanta at home, starting to play good basketball, all the players they need healthy, things starting to click, a 
Clippers team at the end of a seven-game road trip on the East Coast, played a tough game last night, and we might even get a couple rest here. So I make the Hawks one-point favorites here. I'll happily bet them plus three. That's minus 110 at FanDuel and a couple, a couple other places. And again, keep an eye on the injury report. If it turns out maybe Kawhi is resting tonight, maybe James Harden is resting tonight, I would play this Atlanta plus anything. So again, as I said, we got to be vigilant, but I look at this, the Hawks injury report looks pretty clear, and there's only upside in having the Hawks in this position if something happens with the Clippers. So let's grab the Hawks plus three now. Again, I like that even if everybody in the Clippers plays. So a good bet here, plus three. Sprinkle the money line if you like, but I like this spread at plus three. I think that's actually the best value here. We've got five other games. I'll touch on them quickly here. And again, this is why Noops isn't betting these games. That's why we call it not for Noops. They're just not for me. The Los Angeles Lakers visit the Charlotte Hornets. The Hornets are 12 and a half point underdogs. The total is 227 and a half. The Lakers in the middle of a road trip here, as is tradition. LeBron James is questionable. Anthony Davis is questionable. So we could lay 12 and a half points with the Lakers, not knowing if their two best players are going to be on the floor in a game where they probably don't need both of them to win. Or we can back a Hornets team that is starting. Um, let me just double check this. This is a name that I don't remember here. This is always my favorite part of the season. I get to learn about new basketball players. And of course, I know Ish Smith. Great Ish Smith, the veteran who's probably played for your favorite team because he's played for just about everybody. And a young name man by the name of Bryce McGowans. That is not the starting backcourt you want in any NBA game, let alone what you're facing tonight in the Lakers, who uh, can be a good team in any particular night. D'Angelo Russell playing well. No reason to expect that to change again against the matchup tonight. So, again, you can lay 12 and a half with a team in the Lakers that you don't know if their best guys are playing, or you can bet on a Hornets team that is just a terrible. This is probably the worst roster in the NBA right now, getting only 12 and a half. This is just a mess. Happy to pass on this game. This one is a little tougher to pass on. The Sacramento Kings go to Cleveland. The Cavaliers, three-and-a-half-point favorites. This is starting to come down. Um, Darius Garland was listed as questionable, so this might be as low as two-and-a-half minus three by the time you see this. The total at 235. That'll probably drop a little bit as well if Garland is out. And the Kings in a similar position to the Clippers. At last game of a seven-game road trip, now the Kings didn't have to play last night and really have not played a tough game on their road trip. They've won these games fairly comfortably. Have not had to push their players too much, and I have them, you know, almost favorites in this game. Where it's, I came in expecting to bet Cleveland. This should be again a great spot to fade Sacramento, but it doesn't look like that great of a fade. The deeper I got into the minutes, the Kings guys have actually played in these wins. At the same time, the injury report keeps getting a little bit messier for Cleveland. Um, Evan Mobley, I'm sorry, Jared Allen, questionable. If he's out, that's a big loss. Even with Mobley back, if Garland's questionable, and again, if you pop up questionable in the afternoon, you usually end up being out probably a game time decision for him it's just tough to trust cleveland in a game where with everyone playing i only make them two point favorites here so uh, my edge would be on sacramento and again don't really look forward to backing them so i'm just going to watch this game and see how it goes this is a tough handicap and speaking of tough handicaps the dallas mavericks visit the philadelphia 76ers the mavericks have kyrie irving tonight luka Doncic is questionable and Derek lively jr is out so Maybe Luka plays, maybe he doesn't, probably does not need to. This Mavericks team has been pretty solid, which is Kyrie, even without Lively, who, again, as I've mentioned, is a key piece for them as the best big man and pick-and-roll partner, which is something really both Irving and Luka need. But they go against a Sixers team that now knows Joel Embiid is out probably the rest of the season, might be able to get back for the postseason, is going to have a repair in his left knee, which generally, again, takes about four to six months. So four months would mean – we're looking at late April, early May, which is just about the time the postseason starts. That's a really tough time to come back. But what that means for the regular season is Nick Nurse and this team is going to have to find a different way to play basketball, and they just haven't done that yet. So it's hard for me to project what the Sixers team is going to look like. Tyrese Maxey is really good. Tobias Harris is a solid player. We've seen Paul Reed be good, and there's just a lot of depth here. So I think Nick Nurse and them can figure it out, but I just don't know what to expect. And at the same time, it's a Dallas team that I do make a small favor in this spot, but just hard to trust. And if Luka is out, this line will probably flip. So uh, nothing really to do here. I'm just going to watch and try to see what the Sixers are going to do. Again, if Luka is in, and for some reason this doesn't move, uh, maybe grab some Mavericks here with Luka in. I have them closer to three and a half, but we'll see. I imagine that line will jump if he's announced in. If I do make any bets, again, they'll go in that FTN Bets Discord in the NBA Plays channel. 
Golden State Warriors visit the Brooklyn Nets. All my numbers came out pretty close to this game. Golden State starting to play better. And in the middle of a road trip, this would generally be a game where you'd expect the Warriors maybe to rest some guys. But the they're not in the postseason yet. Golden State is the 12th seed in the West. They need to win just about every game for a little while here to get back into that playoff contention and really be in a good spot to possibly make the postseason. So I don't expect a down effort from them, even though it's not the best travel spot. The Nets playing really up and down basketball as they do. Just so much variance with the way they shoot three-pointers. So I just don't see a discernible matchup advantage here. The Nets could always hit enough threes to win this game by a lot themselves. At the same time, they could miss, and we could see that from the Warriors. So just kind of a messy game. My model is close to market. I'm happy to kind of let this one go. And the final game of the night, the Toronto Raptors go to New Orleans to play the Pelicans. The Pelicans 11.5-point favorites with a total of 230. Zion Williamson is questionable. Even without him, the Pelicans should probably be big favorites here. The Raptors played a two-overtime game in Oklahoma City last night. Everybody that matters on that team played 40-plus minutes. This is a brutal spot. Now, they're a younger team. That generally means the fatigue can be less, but still not a spot you want to back Toronto in. But at the same time, a game for New Orleans. They just get back home from a four-game road trip, play at home, and then go back out on the road for another four games. A bad spot, kind of a look-ahead spot for them. So I struggle to see if the Pelicans really can put forth the effort needed to win this game, especially as a team that has shown this year in the second half they rest guys and let teams kind of into the back door against a young team in Toronto that I do expect to kind of fade as the game goes along. But who knows? It's just this is a tough spot. I can't really discern anything between either two teams. So those are the five games I don't like. Again, the game I am betting, the Clippers go to Atlanta. I like the Atlanta Hawks. Again, have them as a short favorite here. So even if everyone on the Clippers plays and we don't have a in full injury report, but rough spot for LA. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody gets rest, even if they're in. Give me the Hawks. Really like this spot, plus three. Thank you so much for watching. Again, subscribe to this channel. Thumbs up would be really great. Drop a comment with any suggestions or questions you might have, and I'll be sure to get back to them. As always, Written Hoops with Noops will be out tomorrow. I'll be back in video form on Friday. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at underscore Noops and FTN at FTN Fantasy for all the great stuff going on there. Best of luck until I see you again.